What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm back today to give you a review of the Saucony Grid Shadow 2 in this Creek Marsh colorway. So this is a special Saucony X Saucony release, which is Saucony's line of elevated sneakers essentially collaborating with themselves. So this Saucony X Saucony release is on the Grid Shadow 2, which originally released back in 96-97 as a performance running shoe. But nowadays it's being released as a lifestyle or everyday use sneaker and these landed on the Saucony Canada website a couple weeks back. So the retail price for this shoe is 150 US dollars or $210 here in Canada. The official colorway for this shoe is green and tan and the inspiration behind this colorway, this is actually inspired by Saucony Creek Marsh which is a wetland located in Kutzburg, Pennsylvania which is where Saucony was actually founded. And I've been seeing images of this shoe for months now and I know stores in the US already were carrying this shoe a few months back but I was patiently patiently waiting for a Canadian release and finally we got them a couple weeks ago. So just like any other Saucony X Saucony release, the shoes come in a custom box just for this special pair. So as you can see, this box has a very nature-esque vibe to it. To me, it looks like a map of the area and it depicts the Saucony Creek, which is this blue line that cuts across the box diagonally. So I thought this was a very fun, very playful box design and I thought it was really, really dope and it really elevates the whole unboxing experience of the shoes itself. As far as the shoe goes, so diving into the details, as we start things off with the toe box, you'll see this is covered in this genuine layer of leather in this pale blue shade. This leather here is completely perforated, and right above this on the U-throat, we have this beige colored leather, and this also covers the front toe cap as well, and we have the Saucony logo debossed across the lateral side. Surrounding the front toe cap, we have this textured suede-like material, and if you look closely, the leather itself has been kind of etched away, so this really gives this panel a very plant or organic vibe to it. Covering the eyelets of the shoe and the entire mid panel for that matter, we have this pale gray colored leather, and then the top two eyelets are covered in this dark teal colored TPU layer, which also resembles the look of a leaf. Beneath this on the mid panel, we have the shaggy suede in this light green color, and then in the middle in between this, we have the Saucony stripe, which is crafted using this dark teal colored TPU layer. Running down the sides of the shoe, we have more of that engraved or carved out leather, and this circles around the back of the shoe. And then above this, we have more of that light gray colored leather, and then underneath this, we have a semi-translucent TPU layer in this light blue color, and then the top of the heel is covered in that long-haired suede. As far as the laces go, so these come with two different lace options. The standard default lace is a flat style lace in this off-white color, but they also come with a teal colored lace as well, if you want to give the shoe a little bit of that extra pop. Underneath this, the tongue is covered in that same beige colored leather, but the entire tongue is perforated. And then on the very top of the tongue, we have this tag with Saucony Creek Marsh branding, depicting the animals, specifically some sort of fish, a bird, and the plant life as well. And then on the back of the tongue, there's a small blurb about the Saucony Creek Marsh for anyone that's curious to learn more about this region. So the back of the tongue and the interior of the shoe, this is covered in this white colored mesh. And then as far as the insoles go, these come with a foam line insole and it's covered in a green colored mesh on top and we have this bird printed on the heel which I'm not exactly sure what bird this is but to me it looks like a blue heron or something along those lines. So the upper of the Grid Shadow 2, this sits atop this chunky foam midsole which is painted primarily in this off-white color. On the heel it's painted in this pale blue color and in case within this midsole but not visible to the eye, we also have Saucony's grid technology and this helps with impact protection and energy return. So in simple terms, think of it as like a cassette that's inserted into the midsole. It looks like a tennis racket and it will absorb the shock from your heels landing and crashing against the ground and return that energy back towards you. Finally, turning this pair over to the bottom, so this outsole I thought was wild. We have this semi-translucent rubber in this icy bluish green tone, which resembles the water of Creek Marsh. And just like any other Grid Shadow 2, we have this triangular traction pattern on the forefoot, this wedge of foam in the middle, and this diamond shaped insert of green rubber, which is found on the heel. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And for those wondering about sizing, so in my opinion, Saucony's are a brand that usually run a little bit more snug than normal. 
so my foot measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. And to give you guys a point of comparison, I usually wear a 10 and a half in the Shadow 6000, whereas I usually stick with a size 10 in most Shadow 5000s. So for this pair, going true to size, it did fit me, but it definitely was more on the snug side. So the length of the shoe was okay. There was just about an index finger space between the top of the shoe and the top of my toe. But the issue I had was around this forefoot area where the ball of my foot is. It felt pretty snug and there's pretty much zero room for my toes to flex or move around. So if you have more of a narrow foot and you don't mind more of a snug one-to-one -one fit, you could go true to size, but I feel like if you have more of a wider foot or you just prefer your shoes to have a little bit more breathing room, then I'd recommend going up that half size. Keep in mind, I've only tried these on, so I actually haven't had the time to break them in. So maybe after breaking them in, true to size would fit better, but straight out of the box, it was noticeably quite snug, and I'd say that it was borderline uncomfortable. So again, comes down to personal preference, whether you stick true to size or go half size up. But for this specific colorway, I'm probably gonna lean more towards half a size up. Next up, in terms of the comfort of this shoe, so overall, it's a pretty comfortable sneaker, but it's nothing outstanding. So we do have a pretty chunky foam midsole, so the underfoot feeling straight out of the box, you can feel a bit of that squishiness, but it's nothing really, really good. So in its own right, it is a comfortable sneaker, but it wouldn't be near the top of my list when it comes to my most comfortable sneakers in my collection. Finally, in terms of the quality and the craftsmanship on this pair, so first off, material quality I thought it was really really good. So everything from the leathers, the nubuck like layers, the long haired or hairy suede, all of this I thought felt very very high quality, so in typical Saucony fashion they delivered. And from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, my pair was flawless. The panels were cut in place consistently which is very important. And aside from that though, it was pretty much free of glue stains and the stitch job was really really solid as well. So Saucony is extremely underrated, especially when it comes to quality for the price point that you're paying. And this pair continued to justify that reputation. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet. I'll lace them up for you and I'll show you guys how these look. I don't know what it is, but there's something about this colorway that drew me to it right from the moment I saw it. I really, really love the tones of this shoe. I think they work so well together in a very nature-esque, peaceful feel. And the fact that the quality and the craftsmanship on the pair were outstanding really makes me love these so much more. So I think the Grid Shadow 2 is definitely an underrated silhouette. It definitely doesn't have the same amount of love as, for example, the Shadow 5000 or 6000. But I like the look of this shoe. I love the chunky vibes of it. Kind of has that classic dad shoe vibe, but in a cooler way. And like I said, I love the colorway of this shoe and specifically the material choices and the color blocking. So let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about the Saucony Grid Shadow 2 Marsh Creek? What are your overall thoughts on the execution of the design and the colorway? And is this a shoe you would pick up for the right price? Are you waiting for these to go on heavy discount or is this model just not your thing and it's maybe a pass for you? As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on my social channels as well, which I've linked below, including my Instagram at esco8 and my website at seango.ca. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review and hopefully it helped you in some way. And I'll catch you guys all in my next review.